Here's today's Genesis Medical Moments. We are continuing our conversation about colon cancer with Dr. Harson, a surgeon with Genesis Health Group Davenport Surgical. So doctor, do you find that a lot of people are a little squeamish about the process of getting, of getting screened for colon cancer? It does depend. There's some people that uh, jump right in and they're ready to have their colonoscopies. Otherwise, <laughs> other people are a little bit more, as you said, squeamish yeah, about yeah. Uh, doing it. But we really encourage people to consider having colonoscopies so we can look for polyps and for cancer. Yeah, and, and the prep, has that changed a lot over the years? There are different prep options uh, and it has changed. Um, some of the preps now are quite advanced and do a really excellent job of making sure the colon is very clean so we can look for polyps and make sure that um, you get as much value from your colonoscopy as possible. Okay, how long does the procedure take? It depends, maybe okay. on average between about 15 and 30 minutes. Oh, so not very long, no. not very long. And, and you mentioned polyps, do those always need to be removed? It depends on what kind of polyps they are, but okay. most polyps we do recommend to have removed and are removed in the process of having a colonoscopy. Some polyps are very, very small. Some of them are larger, uh, but generally we remove those polyps at the time of a colonoscopy and send them off to pathology to make sure that they're um, uh, nothing to be concerned about. Okay, okay. And, and you mentioned before that the most common symptom of colorectal cancer is no symptom at all, right? Are That's a lot correct. of people surprised yes. by that? Um, I think that uh, people are surprised. Most people, when they find out they have a diagnosis of colon cancer, are surprised by it. Yeah. Um, unless, in like we spoke before, if it's a more advanced colon cancer, then some people know that they've been having symptoms. Sometimes people delay coming to see a doctor because they're afraid, which is yeah. a normal response to that. But um, that would be the situation um, that we would see sometimes is that people would have those more advanced symptoms and, uh, and then be afraid of having a colonoscopy or afraid of seeing their physician. Okay, what age would you recommend people start getting screened? That also, that's a great question and it, and it really depends on what someone's family history is uh -huh. and what kind of other symptoms that someone has. In general, the screening age has been lowered to 45 from 50. Um, the other times where people would have a colonoscopy before the age of 45 would be if someone was having symptoms. Okay. Uh, other types of people that have earlier, uh, and symptoms such as um, bleeding, abdominal pain, constipation, unexplained diarrhea, those would be some of the things that we would look for uh, to, s to check out the colon to see what's, what's actually happening mm -hmm. with a person under those uh, circumstances. Another category would be people who have a genetic abnormality. Okay. And um, those are um, people who might say like I have um, a mom with colon cancer and her sister had colon cancer and her dad had colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, people that have a history of colon cancer, they should be more attuned with making certain that they have uh, colonoscopies. Um, and uh, so for example, if somebody had a mom with colon cancer, mm -hmm. we would want that person to start screening um, with colonoscopies about 10 years before the onset of colon, uh, colon cancer in their mother. So if their mother was uh, 45 years old when they were diagnosed with colon cancer, then we'd want a family member who's a first degree family member like a sibling or a, um, or a child to start that screening process 10 years earlier. I've read that we're start, you guys are starting to see a lot more of the younger people getting colon cancer. Is that true? It is true. And um, it's one of the very disappointing things about being a surgeon is when we find a, a person that um, presents somewhat later in their disease process before they turn 45. Yeah. And uh, that could be because of genetics or um, uh, it is the group of patients where we're, we're seeing some uh, worse outcomes as a result of that late identification. Oh. The group of people that are 50 years and older, we're doing slightly better because we're able to screen a higher percentage of that population. Okay, okay. all right. And, and how common is it to be diagnosed with CRC? Uh, so there are about 150,000 people that are diagnosed with uh, colon cancer a year. Okay. As far as those that are treated though, and, and have a positive outcome, can you talk to us about some of the statistics when it comes sure. to that? <laughs> there, there are about one and a half million survivals of colon cancer in the United States. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's good news. And a lot of people do make it uh, well through their colon cancer journey. 
Um, certainly there's lots of people that have colon cancer and they're able to have it treated with either surgery or sometimes chemotherapy or radiation therapy and they're cured from their colon cancer and live out their life doing well from that perspective. Well, that's good to hear though, that's good to hear. And you did mention just now uh, uh, some of the treatment options. Can you go into a little more detail about what those options are then? Certainly, there's really quite a few different ways to treat colon cancer. There are people who have a colon cancer that is so small that it's contained within the polyp itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes removing the polyp uh, in itself is curative in that, in that fashion. And so people require no further follow-up in that regard. That's incredibly unusual. It could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, some people um, require surgery alone. And that's where, in general, someone like myself would remove a segment of the colon or a segment of the rectum. And then um, if the uh, pathology is favorable, then sometimes they require no additional treatment. And then if they had uh, any evidence of or concern for spread, such as uh, a larger tumor or a tumor with lymph nodes uh, within the blood supply to the colon, then that person would oftentimes be recommended to see an oncologist or a radiation oncologist, depending on location. Okay. So they would either talk about uh, chemotherapy or um, chemotherapy and radiation therapy if the tumor is located within the rectum. Okay, well, some good information you shared with us today. Dr. Arson, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome, thank you. All right, this was your Genesis Medical Moments, and for more information, you can go to ourquadcities.com and click on the Medical tab.